we talked about benchmarks earlier. So I participated uh, in machine learning, didn't really have a set of benchmarks. Uh, I think just two years ago, they didn't have a set of benchmarks. And we've created something called ML Perf, which is machine learning benchmark suite. And pretty much the companies who didn't invest in the software stack couldn't run ML Perf very well. And the ones who did invest in the software stack did. And we're seeing, you know, like, Kind of in computer architecture, this is what happens. You have these arguments about risk versus sys. People spend billions of dollars in the marketplace to see who wins. And it's not it's not a perfect comparison, but it kind of sorts things out. And we're seeing companies go out of business, and then companies like uh, like uh, there was a company in Israel called Habana. They came up with machine learning accelerators. They had good ML perf scores. Uh, Intel had acquired a company earlier called Nirvana a couple of years ago. They didn't reveal their ML perf scores, which was suspicious. But a month ago, uh, Intel announced that they're canceling the Nirvana product line, and they bought Habana for two billion dollars. And Intel's going to be sh shipping Habana chips, which have hardware and software, and run the ML perf programs pretty well. And that's going to be their product line in the future. Brilliant. So m maybe just a linker briefly on ML perf. I, I love metrics. I love standards that everyone can gather around. Uh, what What are some interesting aspects to that uh, portfolio of metrics? Well, one of the interesting metrics is, uh, you know, what we thought it, it was. You know, we I was involved in the start. Uh, you know, we uh, but Peter Matson is leading the effort from Google. Google got it off the ground, but we had to reach out to competitors and say. Uh, there's no benchmarks here. This we we think this is bad for the field. It'll be much better if we look at examples like in the risk days. There was an effort to create a for the the people in the risk community got together. Com competitors got together were building risk microprocessors to agree on a set of benchmarks that were called spec, and that was good for the industry. As rather before, the different risk architectures were arguing. Well, you can believe my performance, others, but those other guys are liars, and that didn't do any good. So we agreed on a set of benchmarks. And then we could figure out who was faster between the various risk architectures, but it was a little bit faster, but that grew the market rather than, you know, people were afraid to buy anything. So we argued the same thing would happen with ML Perf. You know, companies like NVIDIA were, you know, maybe worried that it was some kind of trap, but eventually uh, we all got together to create a set of benchmarks and uh, do the right thing, right? And we agree on the results. And so we can see whether TPUs or GPUs or, CPUs are really faster and how much the faster. And I think from an engineer's perspective, as long as the results are fair, you are you can live with it. Okay, you know, you kind of tip your hat to your, to your colleagues at another institution, boy, they did a better job than this. What you, what you hate is if it's, it's false, right? They're making claims and it's just marketing bullshit and, you know, and that's affecting sales. So you, from an engineer's perspective, as long as it's a fair comparison and we don't come in first place, that's too bad, but it's fair. So we wanted to create that environment for ML Perf, and so now uh, there's a, a ten companies. I mean, ten universities and fifty companies involved. So pretty much, ML Perf has uh, is the is the way you measure machine learning uh, performance, um, and and it didn't exist even two years ago. One of the cool things that I enjoy about the internet has a few downsides, but one of the nice things is. Um, people can see through BS a little better with the presence yes. of these kinds of metrics. It's, so it's really nice. Uh, companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter, now it's the cool thing to do is to put your engineers forward and to actually show off how well you do on these metrics. There's not sort of, um, it. Well, it, there's less of a desire to do marketing, uh, less so in my, in my sort of naive no, I, I think what I was trying to understand that, you know, what's changed from the eighties in this era, I think, uh, because of things like social networking, Twitter, and stuff like that, if you if you put up you know uh, bullshit stuff, right? That's just you know mis purposely misleading. You know that you you can get a violent reaction in social media pointing out the flaws in your arguments, right? And so, from a marketing perspective, you have to be careful today that yes. you didn't have to be careful that uh, there'll be people who, who put out the flaw. You can get the word out about the flaws and what you're saying much more easily today than in the past. You used to be, it used to be easier to get away with it. And the other thing that's been happening in terms of showing off engineers is just in, in the software side, people have largely embraced open source software. Yes. It, it was, 
20 years ago, it was a dirty word at Microsoft. And today, Microsoft is one of the big proponents of open source software. The kind of that's the standard way most software gets built, which really shows off your engineers because you can see, if you look at the source code, you can see who are making the commits, who's making the improvements, who are the engineers at all these companies who are, uh, are you know, really uh, great uh, programmers and engineers and making really solid contributions, which enhances their reputations and the reputation of the companies. So, but that's of course not everywhere. Like in the space that I work more in is autonomous vehicles and there's still the machinery of hype and marketing is still very strong there and there's less willingness to be open in this kind of open source yeah. way and sort of benchmark. So uh, MLPerf is, represents the machine learning world is much better being open source about holding itself to standards of different, the amount of incredible benchmarks in terms of the different computer vision, mm -hmm. natural language processing uh, yeah, tasks it actually, is incredible. You know, it, you know, if we, Historically, it wasn't always that way. Um, I had a graduate student working with me, David Martin. So for in computer, in some fields, benchmarking has been around forever. So uh, computer architecture, uh, databases, uh, maybe operating systems, uh, benchmarks are uh, the way you measure progress. But uh, he was working with me and then started working with Jitendra Malik and he's uh, Jitendra Malik in computer vision space, who I, I guess you've interviewed Jitendra. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dave Martin told me, they don't have benchmarks. <laughs> Everybody has their own vision algorithm and the way that, my, here's my image, look at how well I do. And everybody had their own image. So David Martin, uh, back when he did his dissertation, uh, figured out a way to do benchmarks. He had a bunch of graduate students uh, identify images and then ran benchmarks to see which algorithms run well. And that was, as far as I know, kind of the first time people did benchmarks in computer vision, and uh, which was predated all you know the things that eventually led to ImageNet and stuff like that. But then you know the vision community got religion, and then once we got as far as ImageNet, then uh, that let uh, uh, the guys in Toronto. Uh, be able to win the ImageNet competition, and then you know that changed the, the whole world. It's a scary step, actually, because uh, when you enter the world of benchmarks, you actually have to be good to participate, as opposed to uh, yeah, you can just you just believe you're the best in the world. Uh, <laughs> and I think the people, I think they weren't purposely misleading. I think if you don't have benchmarks, I mean, how do you know? You know, you could have your intuition. It's kind of like the way we did used to do computer architecture. Your intuition is that this is the right instruction set to do this job. I believe, in my experience, my hunch is that's true. We had to get to make things more quantitative uh, to to make progress. And so, I just don't know how. You know, in fields that don't have benchmarks, I don't understand how they figure out how they're making progress. 